it should be similar to what we did yesterday each is spectrum except in this one we'll have options to remove some of the noise so the tool should look pretty much the same um, we're still using 3.5 a uh, gpt 3.5 and I understand yeah trying to generate the uh, prompts at uh, first mainly so I don't reach the the prompt uh, limit which is currently sitting at uh, 50 messages every three hours well might as well we're already five minutes in uh, let's start popping stuff in let's actually open another tab with the new tool so it will replace uh, this thing we actually can generate an image out of this uh, so that it goes into ChatGPT and describe the image obviously uh, yes, it is a user interface. You are absolutely right. Plot 5. What's the plot 5 that it keeps? Ah, oh, yeah, there is a plot 5 there. And uh, that's a bit odd. Yeah, you can ignore that for sure. And now we should have more context. So, IEG. Yeah, that's the denoise. We'll open this one as well. We already have an app for it. It's not a bad start. I don't know why there's so many globals. I suspect uh, this was generated by GitHub uh, Copilot. So we have the data file copied 10 times everywhere that we don't actually need. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was um, a GitHub. They changed the name to copilot index html is the this current thing that we should get rid of this was the old lab view uh, stuff uh, html that was generated it's not great at all really difficult to work with and um, so we can pop it into our the info it should be legit this should be a better description yeah we can ignore the play speed and play button for now as we did in the current tool this is a detailed description of a user interface and its functionality related to the analysis of eeg electroencephalogram signals particularly focused on wavelet based noise removal and signal visualization in both the time and frequency domains can I move my mouth as if it's me talking? Employs a wavelet-based noise removal algorithm. By default, wavelet denoise and discrete wavelet transform are turned on. When the discrete wavelet transform is turned off, the undecimated wavelet transform is employed. The interface allows users to observe changes within different frequency bands, either by clicking, play, or by scrolling through the file. Um, yes, we have data. Um okay we have this info um, let's not copy this should we just copy uh, everything so we have that and we need the templates and static and yet the name the name would be different so we have to remember to change the name templates static and this is the app and this info file essentially should be changed to that yeah won't worry about the play button or play speed for now 
and we have the tune plus a wavelet based noise removal algorithm yeah that's right we need that so we're creating a flask application yeah we're not using live view anymore it's just python and that's the source of the data now input have this file no it's not through different data files it's through the same um, same data that we loaded into that is currently being loaded windows size yeah default of 10 seconds is fine yeah we have the trend so that should bring the signal around zero this actually can be ranging from zero to five with yeah larger filter water they used to cause all sorts of grief toggle that when turned on always the non-filtered spectrum below overlays yeah the whole spectrum uh, that's correct frequency scale that's right now this is the important bits probably just let's just put them in first the wavelet the noise yeah these three okay so this is what we currently have that's the simple frequency domain review we're using the same data and this is what we want yeah we want this description as well or is it already there yeah we mentioned this at the bottom there uh, this is the folder structure it should be the same as we had for the previous tool so i think uh, gpt4 has all this already this will be called same name with the noise we can pop this one in because we'll need to regenerate all these files yeah that's fine can delete some of those because this were the problems uh, with the previous code right so we are obviously not ready to deploy anything because it will be at the moment the same as what we had for the previous tool for this one let's run it locally just to see if it's working have the index for it static and the javascript let's pop in the html just so it has a context yeah we don't actually need a summary we can manage just for you for context and then we have this javascript yeah it's okay we don't need to explain as well the most important thing is this python code uh, stop generating and now the trick question so we need this three to be uh, added yep new parameters yeah you're getting you're getting the <laughs> you know what to do this is a python wavelet library it's actually a uh, confirm with uh, github uh, copilot yep uh, yeah obviously suggesting the same thing new parameters yeah so we don't have them in the html code yet yeah can you do that so we're adding a new library this for oops wavelet analysis we have those three variables additional variables uh, where shall we stick them do we normally put the variables uh, next to the function i don't know okay in html i don't like the fact that it doesn't uh, didn't create a new function okay in the form this should be clearer in uh wavelet settings there's another form do we already have a form and no so this is an extra form now let's put it up top 
Could pop it in there. And let's run this. So this is will be in the local uh, environment. So that's how the development thing will look like. Yeah, we have the wavelet, the noise. Why do we need fetch data? Yeah, we're not using Ajax at the moment. Okay, so another thing is uh, we need some sort of noise uh, measurement thing because we have a noise a performance yeah we'll like those we'll like additional output like this and um, right because i'm pretty sure the problem with this is if i tell it to regenerate the whole python it will uh, stuff things up back to will remove uh, some of the functionality that we already have I mean, don't think I can do it myself, so we'll have to just try it out and make sure the boots are updated after input changed by user. Pop this in. All the outputs are updated after any input changed by user. And then we'll start regenerating the code. Hopefully it doesn't mess up what we did prior. Yeah, this is when a uh, GPT-4 becomes super slow. I don't know what, what it means, if it's just random or am I overloading it already? Yeah, right, we don't need the code yet. Can you... Because it mentioned Ajax to capture user input. Uh, the current code I have is not using Ajax. Well, I don't know which one is better. So the index HTML can just regenerate the whole code. Okay, it says a lot of missing stuff. Why? Okay, stop, stop, stop. Well, what's the problem? No, how to make it update regenerate the whole code. Common changes in the code generate all the necessary script to know how to make it generate the whole thing oh come on no 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 it keeps ignoring me it just it doesn't have the current uh, code i don't like the update buttons do we must have the update or any other buttons. What? And make sure no update or any other buttons are used. Yeah, we'll stop generating updated HTML file. Uh, comment changes. Okay, now it's actually it seem to be generating the whole thing. Ah no. Okay, we have those already pretty sure. Um okay. Edit channel select the uh, noise check pop uh, can this be as uh, separated let's go into separate lines yes yeah it's okay let it be a uh, drop down a uh, number of levels it should be in the javascript there's another output though and uh, yeah the problem with this to the separate plot containers output this one will have this two logos okay script js is okay the entire set of input controls is wrapped within a less than form greater than 
This ensures that we can capture any changes made to the input fields and submit the form, which will send the updated parameters to the server. Added new input controls for wavelet denoise, discrete wavelet transform, and levels are specified. Placeholder less than div greater than elements for the SNR and MSE outputs are added. The server will populate the appropriate values here when the form is submitted. The JavaScript at the bottom adds an event listener to each input element inside the form. Whenever any input's value changes, change event, the form gets automatically submitted, form, submit, which sends the updated parameters to the server and refreshes the page with new outputs. Is this analysis form, do I have to use it? So in the HTML, uh, what form action? Why is it there? Yeah, don't like it. Well, mainly because we're not currently doing this. Uh, do we have to wrap all the input elements? Well, network errors to GPT-4 kind of gives you clues what's going to happen to this service. I think it's still gonna go down, but have to wait and see. And uh, also not uh, rely on it uh, 100%. Give me like a uh, generic, uh, generic stuff. Uh, let's uh, update the current function that we already have instead of adding a new one. Now we don't have the form anymore, remember? Are we converting to JSON? Don't think so. Oh yeah, to understand why aren't you updating the current code? Do we need to start a new chat or something? Yeah, let's do a new one. So if we have this HTML okay, stop generating, then we have this JS. Will it pick up on what needs to be fixed? Ignore code related to play button it's need to be replaced by updated with the actual parameters uh, can you focus on this one we had it in the previous code and it's working fine so i'm not sure what's the deal do we need both fetch data and fetch and render so this seemed to be quite specific which is good. And let's just create a copy of this quickly. Just in case we stuff something up. Is this the complete thing? Endpoint base. That's right. Channel selector, window size, the trend, toggle, filter, order, whole spectrum. Frequency scale. Wait. Frequency. Yeah, okay, it's a bit weird. All right, that's using that variable. This should be the same. Fetch API URL, response JSON, then data. Uh, we don't need logging there. Uh, plot new plot in the start. Start playback function. Replace fetch update. One second. Yes, yeah, so we only use we we wanna only use the one function. So that can be commented out. Uh, get that uh, just. 52. Yeah, the playback is actually not there. And let's restart just to make sure everything's working. Now that's working okay. Wait, right, let's clear this for a sec. Clear console. Um, 
Saw the Jason. Uh, JavaScript 54. Just pop the whole uh, thing in with the errors. See what it says. The value of star second in the URL is percent five object plus event percent five D, which URL decodes to object event. This suggests that the event object itself is mistakenly being passed as the value for the star second parameter rather than the actual value you want. This event listener input function. <laughs> what? Ensure that when you're calling fetch data and render from an event listener, you're not accidentally passing the event object. If you intended to pass a value from the event to fetch data and render, Okay, let's clear this for a sec. The server side error traceback makes clear what the issue is. The flask root get underscore data tries to get the start second parameter from the request and convert it to an integer using. However, it's receiving object event as the value for start second, which is what we suspected from the client side error. And obviously, Python can't convert object event to an integer to ensure that start second is getting the correct value when forming the request URL. In the fetch data and render function, when you construct the parameters, make sure you're providing a valid integer value. Uh, this is the same. Ensure that file scroller value is indeed an integer or a string representation of an integer and not an event object or some other non-integer value. Yeah, we put in now. It should in theory start in the beginning of the file. Okay, I'm not having much luck today. The regenerated last response. Back, you provided clarifies the issue. Your Flask server is encountering a value error when it attempts to convert the value of the start second parameter into an integer. This error occurs because the start second parameter is being passed as object event, which is clearly not a valid integer. This problem is arising from the JavaScript side of your code, where the start second parameter is incorrectly being set. The root cause is in the way fetch data and render is called or how its parameters are handled. Fixing the JavaScript code ensure proper argument passing. Make sure that when you call fetch data and render, you pass the correct argument for second. It looks like you're passing the whole event object instead of a specific value from it. Here's the event listener that might be causing the problem. JavaScript copy code file scroller. Add event listener, input, function, fetch data and render. If fetch data and render is supposed to use a value from file scroller, you need to pass this value explicitly. For example, if file scroller is an input element and you want to use its value, it should be something like this. JavaScript copy code file scroller. Add event listener, input, function, const second equals pass in, file scroller, value, 10, fetch data and render, second. Adjust the logic according to what file scroller is and what value you need from it. Debugging. If you're still facing issues, add console logs to debug. For example, JavaScript copy code function fetch data and render, second equals null, console.log, fetch data and render called with second, second. Rest of your code. This will help you to verify that the function is receiving the correct parameter. Validate on flask side. As an additional safeguard, you might want to add validation on the flask side to handle any unexpected parameter values gracefully. For example, Python copy code at app.root, get underscore data, def get underscore data, try, start underscore second equals int, request, args.get, start second, zero, if set value error, start underscore second equals zero hash or handle this scenario as you see fit hash. Rest of your function by ensuring that the correct value is passed from the JavaScript front end and adding some safeguards on the Python back end, you should be able to resolve this error. To actually understand, can you make it clearer? So what the problem is? Your Flask back end is throwing an error because it's receiving the string object event instead of a valid integer for the start second parameter. Okay. What's the solution? Ensure that you're passing the correct value for the second parameter to fetch data and render. Does it have a second parameter? It only has one parameter. When you call fetch data and render inside the file scroller event listener, you're not passing any argument, which results in the function receiving the event object itself as the second parameter. Okay, I'm not passing a, any parameter, I mean. No, I don't want to change the Python code. That's working okay. When changing to fix. Oh, 
You've already implemented the recommended change in the JavaScript to address the issue of passing the event object, object event, to the fetch data and render function. Specifically, you updated the file scroller event listener to pass the scroller's value correctly. However, to ensure full robustness and avoid potential issues in the future, I'd recommend a few additional changes. Well, first of all, I'm still getting errors. Uh, let's restart the application. Should be so it's running okay the first time around. The file scroller is working well. The frequency spectrum is updating okay. Now problem is those I do not expect those to work yet. It won't be they're not actually connected anywhere. Let's say when changing the channel number I get this error. Uh, that's not cool. So I'm getting a 500 response. Uh, how do we fix it? I'm still still getting because we combined two functions together that weren't actually meant to be there. The error message you're seeing suggests that somewhere in your JavaScript code, an event object is being passed as the start second parameter to the fetch data and render function. Given the provided code, you've correctly ensured that the event isn't being passed in your file scroller event listener. Okay, so what's the problem is? For all the event listeners that call fetch data and render, pass an explicit value instead of relying on a default null or event object. Right, because, so the problem would be with this, this last uh, call, is it? Right, so I need to change uh, all of those add default parameter in fetch data and render right or, or just add default okay modify the fetch data and render function to handle null or any other unexpected values so this should uh, resolve any yeah we don't want to change the python code because i know it's been working right well now it's working okay yeah, so it's the default value for the fetch data and render function. Those, those are okay. It's trying to put in uh, Google Ads and things in uh, non-production code. Um, right, so that helped. Size working. The trend, yeah, the trend just uh, making sure the signal is uh, centered around the zero. Because sometimes, yeah, it's not making much change, but yeah, it is all working. Yeah, this is overlaying the whole spectrum in production it will look more like it will look a bit better like this uh, so this is the previous uh, tool we have um, over here and currently working on this one the EG noise removal which will look the same but you will have this extra wavelet denoise function where you can select discrete wavelet transform or undecimated and select the number of uh, levels uh, this uh, data has a seizure in it this eg i think it's mainly coming from one side of the brain than the other yeah this will max out at uh, a 60 so i'm not even sure why the oh can actually right Oh, come on, those tiny bits are so annoying. So you can manually, it's actually quite surprising. can manually add the, uh, yes, yeah, so this is the whole uh, seizure. And uh, now something is wrong. No, so it's coming from because uh, we have uh, eight channels on one side of the brain and eight channels on the other side of the brain so the seizure is actually starting i think it's the left uh, zero to seven and then seven to fifteen would be the right where the seizure 
essentially more visible uh, later. So it's what it used to be called secondary generalized, where seizure is starting locally and then spreading throughout the brain. Um, so when default, if I restart the page to the, the default values, so this is the AP, AP center. <laughs> Yes, I'm not joking, there's some uh, uh, papers, some attempts to compare seizures to what's called uh, earthquakes. And yes, it's a bit like an earthquake in the brain. So in this case, uh, comparing your baseline, so after seizure, and uh, delta to theta ratio could be handy because currently it's about, was it third, and during seizure, in some places, during seizure, it's about uh, one to one uh, ratio, almost. So higher uh, a frequency component, a power in the higher frequency components. That's not always, always the case, so yeah, I have to be careful of these things. Anyway, and uh, yeah, so this tool is available on the page. You can go check it out. Let me know what you think, what I can improve, any questions, suggestions, comments, requests. Uh, right, let's get back to this because we're trying to add the uh, wavelet uh, denoising functions. I think we're kind of almost there. Okay, that works uh, how about the new inputs related to wavelet the noise okay let's start from here but let's see what the bot got to say to integrate the new inputs related to wavelet denoising into your javascript and the request the flask backend you need to update both your javascript code and flask code Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Okay, that's great, so you understand the context. First, you need to extract the values from the new input elements and add them to the params object that gets passed to the Flask backend. Right. So in our fetch data and render function, we need to add extra parameters as such. Next, add eventlessness for these new elements. Right, we need a comma there. Yeah, we don't want to be tripped over little things so where are our current event listeners okay we're adding more here now in the python in your flask group that handles the get underscore data endpoint you need to extract these new parameters from the request and process them accordingly here's a sample update yeah don't like sample sample means it's not the whole code i'm not using the frequency scale why and why is this uh, defaulting to linear? Default, default value to be returned if the key can't be looked up. No, this actually should be what the GitHub compiler doing anything at all? Is it called log? Don't think so. I know it is called log. Okay, so default should be log. This parameter is not actually being used, so right, anyway. We need to add this three and process the data. Uh, let's see some comments. Remember, the exact implementation of how you use these parameters in the back end depends on your application's requirements and the wavelet denoising logic. Use the extracted parameters related to wavelet denoising to process the data as required. Yep. This could involve applying a wavelet transform, denoising the data, and then using the inverse wavelet transform to get the denoised data. Sounds good. Okay, we're ready. It's Old. Wait, what we, did we just... All ah, right, no, that's okay. Let's save that. What's the difference between uh, versus Pi Wavelets? Both PYWT and Pi Wavelets refer to the same library. Right. Pi Wavelets is the name of the project, and PYWT is the name of the Python module you import when you're using a library in your code. Okay, so you made a mistake there. Ah, no. Okay. 
and I already have it installed pretty sure. uh, yeah well first it's not indicating an error the error there is that it's not being used but uh, I'm pretty sure I have it installed already here's a simple example of how you might use wavered denoising in the context of your flask endpoint okay this is very basic it's missing a lot of code this is a very basic implementation of wavered denoising in practice, you might want to fine-tune the thresholding strategy, consider other wavelet functions, or incorporate additional denoising techniques. Furthermore, the exact steps and parameters can vary based on the nature of the data and specific requirements of the denoising process. If your application has specific requirements or if you're working with a specific type of data, like EEG data, you might need more specialized processing. Right. Well, first of all, that's why we have the input uh, parameters, so you can change and play with it and see what difference does it make. Let's see... Uh, this simple example is okay. I make sure the input values from the HTML form are being used. So we have three of them. We have the noise on and off. I have an option between discrete and non discrete, undecimated. And the number of levels which is the number of levels in the discrete wavelet analysis. Yeah, we need more context for that. In case we're integrating something. Of course. Let's integrate the inputs from the HTML form into the wavelet denoising process. Yeah, that's what I just said. We have wavelet denoise. Wavelet denoise. A checkbox to decide whether to use wavelet denoising or not. And this one as well. Wavelet transform, a drop down or similar to select the wavelet type, like db1, db2, etc. Um, right, so this should have more input in it. That would be nice actually to have uh, uh, different types of wavelets uh, selected. Levels, an input to determine the level of decomposition. And that sounds legit. In the flask endpoint, we need to retrieve these values from the request and use them accordingly. Okay, so we're already doing that. Yeah, we don't have DB1. Uh, in the HTML. Levels. Can we add more? Options. Can uh, what? Uh, oh, I like TV one. TV one. TV two. Okay, maybe something else. Uh, let's check. Uh, can it give us this one? A uh, more wavelet types. Yeah, give me some other ones. Terms DB one, DB two. And so on refer to Dorbachev's wavelets. In wavelet analysis, the Dorbachev's wavelets are a family of orthogonal wavelets characterized by a maximal number of vanishing moments for some given support. In simpler terms, the wavelets have properties that make them useful for signal compression and noise reduction. Yeah, how about other type of wavelets used for EEG? Yeah, I know what the EEG is. Yeah, more that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so we have those. TB1, TB2 should be enough. As mentioned before, these wavelets are popular due to their compact support and orthogonality. Depending on the number of vanishing moments, i.e., the number after, BB, they can capture different features in the city, is particularly popular in time frequency analysis of EEG signals. It offers a good balance between time and frequency localization, making it suitable for analyzing oscillatory activities in the EEG. Yeah. Setting a uh, Mexican head.
Uh, that should be plenty more wavelet types. Okay, let's refresh this page. Uh, where are the charts? Um, Jason, one of three. Uh, what's the problem? The error message uncaught type error. Cannot read properties of null. Reading and event listener is a common JavaScript error that occurs when you try to access or manipulate an HTML element that doesn't exist or hasn't been rendered yet. In the error you provided, the issue is happening on line 103 of the file eek.js. The error message indicates that you're trying to attach an event listener to an element that is currently null. That's a null. That's a failure. Uh, stop the app for a sec. Start it again. Check the element ID. The element ID didn't change the element ID. My microphone's playing up.